I'm here myself to my headphones. Yes, man. Like, I feel real good about this. Pay attention because you are now listening to Permission to Speak Freely. 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 So, see that? That's that. Uh, oh, yeah, nice, yeah. man. I want to say, nice. say Ella made that. Yeah, Ella made that, man. Ella made that. Hey, let me, let me tell you, though. Um, um, man, you should see her new cups, though, man. She got She's being freaking crazy yeah. creative now on these cups, man. So, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Let's plug the, can we plug the sure. company? Yeah, man. Uh, you guys, the cup, you know, my, my wife sent that cup to, to Angeline a while back, man. But if you guys want, you know, take a look, man. Y'all rebellious, man. Take a look at it, man. She, she She's doing big things with these cups. More than just cups, though, but. Uh, she got a lot of little merch on there, man. So you guys take a look at her, like man. She's Shopify? doing big things, man. Is it Shopify? Yeah, Shop- Shopify is, is one of them. Uh, you can get on there. You actually can just type her name straight in, man. She got her own little page and stuff, man. Uh, she got that. I think she on she on Etsy too. Okay, so Etsy, um, Etsy and Shopify. E- Etsy, Etsy and Shopify. Okay, yeah. take a y'all look, rebellious yeah. boutique on Etsy and yeah, Shopify. If you listening, right, you probably like wondering what the hell we talk about, but I'm holding up a cup. I had a cup in my hand. It's made by uh Damon's wife, Ella Leggins, and she got a shop called Y'all Rebellious um, on Etsy and Shopify. Custom, almost anything you want, really custom. It's just see- different seasons. You might get something different. I got me a Santa Claus with a COVID mask on last year, so. Yeah. Most definitely, man. Hey, but welcome to. I, I was so I've been trying to work out an intro. You know what I'm saying. So I'm gonna test one of them out right now. He's a 23 year DCCS. He's a 14 year electrician's mate, and this is the most d- d- dangerous podcast. <laughs> I don't know. That's corny. <laughs> <laughs> oh man you know what man that's funny so uh i'm about to come up with me something no. now man for next time the most man. dangerous podcast in the navy <laughs> permission to speak free no. boom nah, I, don't, I, I don't know but um hey so, <laughs> yeah, <go ahead>. so <laughs> hey so it's funny because i gotta edit these it, like it's so many sound effects that i hear from you like what i just mute you know when i mute me and i just go to you i hear so many crazy sound effects but um I want to start off with a disclaimer. Um, normally, the way I got everything set up is Angeline is here. Um, if you don't know her, if you're a first time listener, that's my wife. But um, she's here in the background, don't making like all the magic happen to where it sounds like I'm alone in the house. Um, and that's like taking care of my dog and, you know, doing some stuff like that. Unfortunately, she's not here right now because um she's still in the hospital she just had surgery so if you are a listener you know about our story so you know we had a miscarriage uh she had some fibroids and she just got those removed um she had like nine of them where i think that they thought it was three but it was nine so she just got those removed so everybody who prayed her in and made sure that she was good she is good now i think she's just soaking up some of that hospital you know time you know what i'm saying if we were civilians (laughs) If we were civilians, we'd be out of there the next day. You'd be up out of there right you know now. Yeah, yeah, you be like ordering food. Like, it's room service in that joint, man. So, 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 oh, so I saw her like eating a flatbread when I came back in there yesterday. So, but yes, yeah, so um, <laughs> she is uh, doing good, and now she's on her road to recovery. Recovery. Um, yeah, man. That's good stuff. How, how you doing, man? What's up? I'm doing good, man. You know. Um, the little two little new little puppies running me crazy. Two you puppies. know what I'm saying? Other than two puppies, man, two of them, man, like they crazy, man. But they fun though at the same time, though, man. But we 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 almost getting them, and they starting to to poop in the right spot. So it's coming, man. It's coming together. Yeah. It's coming together, man. The kids love them, so uh, that's good to go. Uh, work is work. You know how that go. Uh, we 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 doing big things, going on ships, but. Uh, I also want to want to talk real quick on this podcast, man. Bring up one of my one of my uh, my master chief, man, uh, Brandon Beck, man. He had to he had to get uh, ribbed off the ship, man. He had a he had like a, um, a mini stroke, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. So he got some medical stuff. He he's getting uh, looked at, getting a lot of tests done on him. Uh, I kind of know more, but I don't want to put his put his stuff out there like that, man. But but you know. 
uh, prayers to him and his family, man, on what he's going through right now. Uh, he's still in the hospital and still running tests right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was like a Thursday or Friday. So um, hopefully everything works out and he's good to go too. Yeah, man. It's 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 the see test the season, right? It's a crazy season. Um a lot of I'm messing around with lights, I'm sorry, y'all. But uh yeah, it's a crazy season. We got a lot of like a lot of crazy things happening, like uh stories, uh people passing away. Um Yeah. Bob Dole. We had a chief who passed. I wanna say a BMC that yeah, passed. That, BMC you know that I heard yeah, about. Man. So um prayers for his family. And we got a couple um more people that we know about that we'll you know we'll get into in a second yeah i do want to um take a moment to say that um the navy right i'm happy to see the navy being progressive about people going through that trauma and finding ways to support that kind of thing you know so um like i just say stated you know angeline she just went through surgery and um what's going to happen is the Navy's going to support me to be able to support her, you know, my command. Yeah. It's going to support me to be able to support her for a period of time. Um, and like, and they were very supportive of it, you know, but this was something that as when I, the moment I came, you know, um, to the command, I let them know about like, Hey, this is happening um, with my family right now. And then when this happens, my expectation is to be able to get this done, you know? And that's yeah. coming along with everything that I got to do. So I'm going to put in work. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to do what I got to do every day that I'm here. Because um, I know it's going to be a period of time, a moment of time where I'm going to need y'all to kind of support me because I'm supporting, you know, my wife and my family. And the Navy's been like great about that. You know, my command. Yeah. And I know that's not yeah. probably, I know that's probably still sadly command dependent, but um, I salute my command and, 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 you know, taking care of me and um, every command where people kind of starting to understand that the people matter, you know what I mean? Especially yeah, network man. courses. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's, that's, that's good, man. I mean, you know, you're right though. All commands ain't, the, ain't, ain't built the same, you know what I mean? Uh, but you know, it kind of happened to me when I had my surgery too, man. Like the command kind of stood behind me, man. They could have, I could have went to limp do and been, you know, shipped out somewhere yeah. else. You know what I'm saying? They said, no, you know, you good. Take your time off and come back when you're ready type stuff. So that was pretty cool of that too, man. But on top of that, you need, need good support. Like your division, uh, you know, also is one of those things where they, they have to be able to hold a fort down while you're gone too, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? You get, so you got, so they have to be pretty good to do that too. So yeah, man, yeah, man that's good, man. That, that's, that's, good acknowledgement that's good we acknowledging that on here too that um we we do care about the families man we do care about everybody well-being and we getting better at it um it seemed like every day you want to hear something cool man like it was a junior cell like you know how like it's, it's not just the people that get paid to ask ask me like is everything okay hitting me up like one of my junior yeah. sellers hit me up like she was like hey senior like you know what's going on you know what I'm saying? I told her, like, one of the things that I'm like, worst case scenarios. Well, you know, the worst case scenario is like transition, but that's not what we're thinking about. Right. I'm like, the worst case scenario is that we can't have a baby. Like, that's the worst case scenario. Yeah. Right. A hysterectomy. We can't have a baby. So she hit me up. She's like, hey, senior, you know, how's everything? I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, I hit her, you know, everything good. And then she hit me. And the next question, senior, can you have a baby? Like, like, you know, like, what's the status? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I told her, yeah, and she's yeah. like, yo, I'm so happy. You know, I'm so happy you can have a baby. And I'm like, yeah. so this ain't, this ain't, it's not her job. You know what I mean? I had that conversation with yeah. her, you know, um, but it was her who hit me up. And a few of them um, who hit me up, they really um, care, man. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. And oh, yeah. that don't happen yeah. often from from people yeah. sometimes with people that's higher than them in the chain of command you know so to yeah. get somebody uh at a lower point in the chain of command that's crazy man and i appreciate it yeah but yeah man, most definitely man but it comes from from how you carry yourself too though you know what i mean most of the time that's where it comes from it comes from how you care about them and then it kind of you know goes both ways after that man they, if one thing is them asking you that which is big because they feel like they can yeah. and that's also at the same time now they feel like they can come talk to you about anything which is which is to me is a great thing 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying, of sailors coming to, to, to talk to us, not just thinking I'm just sitting in this high horse, sitting on this big chair, and can't nobody see me type stuff, man. They feel like they can come talk to you about anything. So. Yeah, man, and That's we have some really good conversations. Um, I guess we need to dedicate this uh, episode to somebody, um, Brian uh, Bourgeois, Brian Bourgeois, um, commander of Navy SEAL Team 8. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, let's man. go ahead and dedicate the episode to his family, him. Um, so I, I, I got a couple little kind of um, hard kind of tick points about him. Um, he sustained injuries during uh, fast rope training exercise in Virginia. Um, and that's like trying to see how fast they get, you know, get off the helo. Uh, he was 43 years old and he had been in the Navy for 20 years. The incident in which he passed is still under investigation. Um, he was awarded a Bronze Star and numerous awards. He was a father, a husband, a friend, and from what I'm hearing is a great leader. Um, and he leaves behind a wife and five children. Mm. Sad, man. These are these these are the the stories, man, that that I personally hate to hear, man. Right. Um, and I'm saying that because we're in the military and it's one of the things that that we do, we go into war, we go in this, but the what what hurts me the worst the the, 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 the most on this is the fact of it was doing a training exercise, yeah. man. You know what I mean? That kind of but you know, being a SEAL is a dangerous job. Trust me, they have to be, you know, they have they do things we don't yeah. do on the norm, right? So um I know that, but it's still a training event, you know. So Yeah, that um, training events could be Fame. They train events are a while though. Yeah, yeah they're they are wild, man. I, I was <laughs> you bullshit, man. I was reading um was it the economy? The book, mm -hmm. the seal that the seal wrote, man. And he he they was talking about some some situations they was in and some of them was like training events, and I was like, Wow. Yes. <laughs> man, they, they train events are, 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 are a while. So Brian I'm um, a big shot. Bourgeois. Brian, I wanna make sure Brian, I, I say that right. Brian Bourgeois. Yeah, condolences to the family. Commander man. Navy Sad. SEAL Team Eight. <clears throat> yeah, we man. also this um, we lost a a, a a vet, a Navy, a, a military vet, an Army vet, Bob Dole. So Bob Dole, a lot of these, a lot of these, you know, politicians that we lose, they are gonna be military vets. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah. um, we, we always going uh in, in some way, shape, or form salute them, uh, whether or not. It's not based on like no political parties or nothing like that. Um, number one, because I don't have any, um, and Damon doesn't either, right? You don't have any either, right? Uh -uh. Yeah. So, uh, but Bob Doe, he was ninety eight. Right? He lived a, he lived a life. He lived. He lived a life. He lived, man. Uh, he passed away on five December. Um, he uh, stage four lung cancer is what he had, and. He served in the army from 1942 to 1949, so it looked like right after Pearl Harbor he went in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so 42 to 49. Um, man, 98 years old, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess since we kind of at, at this period, and we talking about people that transition, and we talking about um, vets, um, stuff like that, uh, vets and heroes. I think it's the the best time for us to just get started with our hero of the day. Oh yeah, man. So the hero of the day, hey. So we all know, you know, we sell, just celebrated Pearl Harbor D seven to seven, right? So why not talk about, you know, a Medal of Honor winner that was during that time period? So who I'm going to talk about right now is <clears throat> Herbert C. Jones, right? He was an ensign, right? So let me read his citation. Four, conspicuous, devotion to duty, extraordinary courage, and complete disregard of his own life, above and beyond the call of duty, during an attack on the fleet in Pearl Harbor by Japanese forces on 7 December 1941, Ensign Jones organized and led a party which was, supplied, which was supplying ammunition to the anti-aircraft battery of USS California after the mechanical horse was put out of action when he was fatally wounded by a bomb explosion. When two men attempted to take him from the area, which was on fire, he refused to let them do so, saying the words to the effect, leave me alone. I am done for. Get out of here before the magazines go off. 
Hey, man. These guys are built different, man. I know we said this stuff before, um, but these guys are, are, are built different, man. Um, so the horse went down, so they couldn't move the ammunition. So his team he got, he's in charge of, is moving, he's moving the ammunition to the USS California, right? And, you know, it was an explosion. And he pretty much said, get out of here, man. Mm -hmm. I'm done. People are there to save him. Yeah. And he's like, no, get out of here before the magazine explode and kill you guys also. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, man, that's our meta un honor uh, recipient of the week, man. Herbert C. Jones, instant Herbert C. Jones. Yeah, man. Instant Herbert C. Jones. A lot of heroes that day. Um <laughs> So, a lot of heroes that day. So we did a sell at a quarter board. I'm going to give you one of my questions and let me know if it was too hard a question. It was how many Japanese people were, how many Japanese soldiers were captured and how many were killed uh, the day of the Pearl Harbor attack? Was that too hard a question? I had naval history. Was that too hard a question? Yeah, I probably wouldn't have knew it. I can tell you that much. So one of them. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it was. It was a hard question, but I knew if I didn't <laughs> get up, I wouldn't know it off the top of my head either. <laughs> One of them was captured. Uh, 100, 129 of them were killed. Do you hate the dude at the uh, cell of the quarter board that asked like the outrageously hard uh, question? Well, no, I don't because me and those boys, I, I'm watching more on how they they soak the question in and, how, and what they come up with. If they answer it, it's great, but everybody ain't going to be answering these questions. Trust me, man, we got questions we asking people that probably never heard it before or whatever the case may be, or they, maybe they heard it before. I don't know. So I don't really be looking to see if they answer, but me, as a senior chief that been in for a hot minute, if somebody asks some crazy questions, mm -hmm. man, when that board over with, I cannot wait. Yeah. <laughs> I look, I make little notes down to myself, man, like, like, like a, a WTL for a ransom yeah. I'm putting on my paper so I can ask that, that whoever's on that board, the chief or whoever, said, man, what the fuck was that? Well, <laughs> well, sometimes you want to see how the person handles the question, right? That's what yes, you're saying. Yes, exactly like, what I do. Like, yeah, yeah, So I have four yeah. questions because one of the, we, it was two questions apiece, but one of the people dropped out, so I had four questions. Mm -hmm. And I had two different uh, topics. My first one was the, the nav admin topic, you know, so as a, you know, I, I feel like I smoked that. We read nav admins like all the time. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. I, I could do that one, you know, with my eyes closed. Um, but the history is, <laughs> it's funny. I say that about nav admins that like, I'm excited to get nav admins as a topic <laughs> on a, on a board to ask somebody else. But the history question was a little different. Um, I'm like, all right, let me keep something close to Pearl Harbor. You know what I mean? And um, since so all I did was like go to like a Pearl Harbor, like it's a, like a standard fact sheet with all the casualties and everything. it's like the first thing you see yeah. when you go like Pearl Harbor. And I would think if I was going up for sell of the year, sell of the quarter, <laughs> they probably don't ask period. me about Pearl Harbor. So let me <laughs> go ahead and, yeah. you know, look something up. It's like the easiest first thing you could find. So I asked that. I asked about midterm counseling and the, um, the five stages that they actually, the five steps that they actually added to performance counseling. I asked them, um, yeah. easy to me, it was an easy question. I asked like, how would they deal with a 19 year first class who had read the nav admin about, uh, COVID CCDA. And he was like flipping out in the, in the, uh, you know, flipping out in the shop or the office. One of them was like, yeah, I'm, I make them, I make them take the vaccine, <laughs> like, like, you know, like, oh, he was unvaxxed. Uh, in addition to everything, he was unvaxxed. He, he, he wasn't vaxxed. Uh, I was like, yo, how would you deal with it? You know, he got a bunch of junior guys around. He going off about this nav app. And, look at that, two, five, six, two, one. Something like yeah. that. So um, then I asked him about, uh, the last question was, um, it was opinionated. Like out of all the military heroes, you know, out of all the heroes in the history of the of the Navy, uh, which one do you like identify with the most, or which one do you like inspires you? So it was something like that. Believe it or not, like some of them had it. Like the one dude was like, <laughs> the, one, <laughs> the one dude was oh, like, man, man, it's just like all about like damn the torpedoes, man. Full speed ahead. <laughs> yeah, I like that, man. I but like no, but his story, I can't, I, I don't even, because he might listen, that I don't want to take nothing away from him. He actually went through like 
a hardship in his life. So the hardship, mm-hmm. like if you understood what he was saying or if you knew about his hardship, some people, I don't know if everybody really, did, yeah. but I think they did. But if you knew the hardship he went through, it was like a real crazy hardship, like more than one, like two, but like, yeah. And then like the same one, but it was like, um, the damn, the torpedoes and everything is the hardship. You know what I mean? So he's mm-hmm. he, like a metaphor now, like damn the torpedoes, like full speed ahead. Like this is what I connect with or whatever like that. So it was pretty cool, man. Yeah, that's good, man. That was, that's a good one. Though. The I thing like with it. the the thing like with the boards man. that I used to not like as a junior seller, I think is like, man, like yo, if you had to look this up too, like, like if you can't ask me this question, like just off the like off the strength of you know this, man, like we might have a problem, man. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I might have to ask oh, you like man. later, like, hey, chief, are you seeing like, like what was the significance of that? Uh, you know, that question. I don't remember. Man. I, I, <laughs> I used to do some crazy stuff back when I was a junior seller, man. Oh, man. Yeah. Most definitely. I know I mean. I both do. I, I'm always doing it. I look forward to d- d- doing it when somebody asks some crazy yeah. questions, man. I ain't gonna lie. I look forward to, like, saying, why you yeah, ask that man. shit for? Hey, so yeah, for, for disclosure for the listeners, hey, we were supposed to have a guest on this podcast, but um, um, it wasn't a technical difficulty. It was technically a no. difficulty. <laughs> Like, uh, but we're not gonna have a guest today. We we won't have a guest today. Um, and uh, but look, you know, look 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 out for a, a guest coming up soon. So, um, December seventh is the last like major day that passed, um, since we did a podcast, right? So, uh, some of this episode, like we just did, like a hero that's from uh December seventh. So some of this stuff, just remember that. Just think about it. Another big. Thing. So December 7th for us Navy is the day that they live, you know, in infamy. December 7th for me, Damo, is the day that they live in infamy, but it's also my birthday. Yep. So it's a major, major, major day. Um, and we I went to see Bruno Mars. Oh, you yeah, ain't telling me you went to see Bruno, man. Yeah, yeah, I went to see oh, Bruno. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I just, so okay. it's crazy because on, on Saturday, since my birthday fell on a Tuesday and we knew we had a surgery on Friday, on Saturday, we did something with my friend. She tried to surprise me. Um, I knew everything that was coming. I almost was about to text my boy. <laughs> I was going to text my boy like, yo, I'm right outside. I'll be there in a second. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> he was in there when I got in there. But, um, oh, but a- and it's crazy because that was two days after I told her I knew she was trying to surprise me with the Bruno Mars tickets because I found that out like three weeks before I told her the truth about it. You don't it. tell her though, man. I had to tell her. What? I had to, man. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why I had to tell him. Why? Why? All right. Number one is I wanted to be like you know because she be look she, you know she'll look so it's like if I if I'm not like genuinely surprised she knows you know what I mean like yeah, yo what, what's true. up that's like why true. you don't seem but why you ain't like <laughs> like yeah. Bruno yeah. like but but what happened was <laughs> I had went through her phone she gave me her phone um to look at pictures so I'm going through the phone looking at pictures. And she told me to swipe, but I don't think she remembered. She took a screenshot of when she bought the ticket. I don't know who does that, but Angeline does that, right? So she takes a <laughs> screenshot of the ticket. So oh, I saw man. it. I'm like, oh, man, like Bruno Mars. And I didn't say anything. And now I'm like holding on to this secret. You know, I even oh, went to work. Three weeks. Yeah, man. I told, the, I told some of the women at the job. I'm like, man, my wife is hiding something from me. No, I was like, I'm keeping a secret from my wife, but she keeping a secret from me. And they, they, you know, they ain't know what the hell I was talking about. They're like, what you talking about, I, know. I was like, then I told them, like, Bruno Mars. So what happened was, it's at the, it's at this casino, right? It's at the casino. So there's also restaurants at the casino that we, we eat at. So one day for, oh, for my birthday, she took me to the steakhouse at the very casino that the Bruno Mars, um, you know, thing is. Mm-hmm. And she was like, hey, babe, on Sunday, you know, just make sure you got a clear schedule. And after that, I was like, man, I can't take this no more, man. <laughs> like, 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 <laughs> I was like, I can't you, take this no more. Oh, like, my babe. goodness. So I, feel I know, bad, babe. Man. Look, I feel bad. I was like, yo, man, I got to tell you something. Man. I got to tell you something. I have to tell you this. No, I'm like, oh, yo, my goodness. I, I know what's happening on Sunday, man. You know, Bruno Mars. And then she was like, it's crazy. She was like, that's crazy. It was times that I was trying to hide. Like, I had got an alert on my phone. When you was like, I tried to hang up and hide it. I was like, I've known this for like the last three weeks. 
Oh you know? my goodness, and then, man. But she probably she probably was relieved though, right? Like I ain't got to honestly, hide this shit no more. it probably was better because that Sunday. So remember, we like we supposed to celebrate the weekend because my birthday was a Tuesday. That Sunday, he canceled the show. So I don't know what she would have mm. done if she was trying to keep this a secret. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know how I told you to like not do nothing on Sunday. No, you can do something <laughs> Sunday, but don't do nothing on Thursday. <laughs> like, so that Sunday he canceled the show and he rescheduled it to Thursday. But it makes complete sense why he. I, I can't see him doing the show he did on Sunday. I can't see him doing that two days straight. Yeah, yeah, you know. And I don't go too crazy. I'm one of them that don't go too crazy at shows, and I didn't. Um, when he did Uptown Funk, we were kind of. He did it as an encore song, so people had left, mm-hmm. and um, and we they thought everything was done, and then he came back out and he did Uptown Funk, and I'm like, I know I, I, it was some big song I knew he hadn't done yet, but I, I was able to move around a little bit better then. But the the, the venue was packed, so we, we, you know we couldn't, I couldn't oh, yeah. really. I was chilling, you know, my knee, I got knee problems, so every now and then I sit. It down. was standing. Oh, so you had to stand. It was a stand it was up chair. type deal with no sit down. Oh, yeah, chair, yeah, okay. yeah. And we okay. we happen to be in the section with like a lot of the. It's Bruno, so it's kids there, it's adults there, it's older people. We happen to get in a good section with a lot of older people, so I didn't feel bad about um, sitting down, and I wasn't forced to see yeah. somebody's like ass in my face for two hours. Yeah, yeah. But yo, this dude yeah. was incredible, man. Like. It's Bruno, oh, yeah, man. Imagine, this dude, dude played the oh, electric. Yeah. He sang. Uh, he sang. He sang. Sang. He played the electric guitar. He played the acoustic guitar. He put his band uh-huh. on break. He got on the piano. He did like six, yeah. seven songs on the piano. Songs that like we didn't even know he um like had anything to do with. I never knew he was yeah. on that young and wild and free. Like um, some sometimes we get. Uh, I never knew that. You know, yeah, so he, yeah. He, he, he was a part. Yeah, that, of that was him. In the, that was him. Yeah, um, yeah, man. The dude is incredible, though, man. I never seen him play live, though, man. But you know it, though, man. Like you hear things about him, and you know he got um, he got sisters too. Oh, for real? They got a group. Oh man, yeah, man. He got like I won't say I like I heard about when I was in Hawaii. I knew this because I was in Hawaii. He from Hawaii, and they had like a group. Like I don't, I don't know if they're younger than him or not, but it's like five, four or five of them, maybe even more than yeah. that. And they got a group out, some sisters, man. And I remember them getting some kind of contract or something in LA. When we was in Hawaii, they was yeah. talking about it. Yeah, he you killed know? it, man. He killed. He did his thing. Yeah, he's a yeah, he did yeah his thing. He's a he's a beat. Was Silk Sonic with him? No, no, he no. The whole no, little no, it wasn't. No, Anderson Pop. Just there was no Silk Sonic yeah, thing. No. But he did sing. Um, he sang a couple songs from. Uh, he sang "Lead the Door Open." Yeah. That was like when he was on the piano. Yeah. He didn't even make like a big deal out of those songs. He just sent, did them on the piano and stuff like that. Let's stick with Hawaii for one second. Let's stick with Hawaii for one second. More, yeah, more, more. Um, not so good news. After this, we're gonna talk a little bit about the Army Navy game because I know you watched it, probably. But um, yeah, I know you probably watched it, right? But um, Hawaii for like one second, right? Um, so here, this is what I know about Hawaii. Um, diesel fuel and tap water at an Oahu uh, military base discovered in at least one well, right? This affects uh, tens of thousands of people, right? The well is called the Red Hill Shaft, and it's one of the three wells that's run by the Navy. Um, I know we're all over it right now. I know we're all over there. I know uh, CNO been over there, right? Um, yeah. So I know that. I read in the article, it said residents were complaining around last month that that water tasted and smelled like gas. Not ass, yeah. gas, and just in case anybody was wondering. So it's like 350 times the amount of petroleum that supposed to be tested in that water or whatever. Yeah. You know anything about this? So, yeah, man. So um, I was just reading this article not too long ago, man, like. Um, there, the rear, I guess the rear admiral, uh, was talking about, um, it came from a, a jet fuel spill, right? Uh-huh. Like spill like 14,000 gallons, right? Of jet fuel, right? So one of the things I read about is the Navy, the Navy is owning it. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, we own it. Say like, we owning it, you know, we going to fix it, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, um. I just my heart goes out to to the to the families and everybody that's there, man. But one of the things that um come into play when it when they say is, hey, we own this, we gonna fix it, we gonna we gonna whatever. It's a nav admin just dropped. Mm-hmm. 
28221 temporary lodging allowance. So to me, that's that that that's right there. Let me know whatever they're whatever you're paying for, whatever you're doing, you submit those receipts and you get your money back. Right. Yeah. So I guess that's one one thing in the direction of we owning this as a navy and we're gonna make sure we get it right. But um my 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 other thing is though, man, to this whole article and to this whole story is um though the fact that they said three weeks to four weeks this already had happened. And man, I'm telling you right now, if that 14 gallon spill that happened a long time ago, seemed like they should seem like the residents should have been notified you know a while ago man like they they taking baths man they taking they drinking this shit yeah, you know what i'm saying like like it's a lot going on right there man and and i wouldn't be surprised if some health you know defects or some come after this too man it's like november or some shit yeah. man so yeah man so I, I feel a little bit bad for the families that had that's, that's over there that's still like right now going through this crisis. Hey, so what what, what happened? like um do people get fired for this? Like after I'm, like I, in, in all this situation I, yeah. I want, before before you know you get into it like I want to respect the situation. It's a situation that everybody trying to figure out. You know, you got a uh, secretary Del Toro out there. I deeply apologize to each and every one of you and to the people of Hawaii that this incident may have been destructive to your lives in any way. Right? So Hawaii ordered us to clean it up. Uh, we got CNO, we got SecNav, we got McPon, like everybody out there, we own it. We know what we supposed to do. All right. Yeah. When all of this is over and I, and the way that I think is this, the way I think about most situations, let's figure this out. Let's fix it. Let's mitigate. And let's find a way that this don't happen again. Boom. All right. After that, is it somebody that we need to hold accountable for this? Right, somebody is going to be held accountable for it. I cannot see no one not being held accountable. Now we may not hear it. We may hear it on some kind of message traffic somewhere, but the world may not hear it. Yeah, but somebody needs to be held accountable. You know what I mean? Like, 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 e- even if it's not <laughs> I don't for the incident, because a lot of times in the navy, it it don't gotta even be for the incident. Like you, you know, yeah. you might get somebody that makes an honest mistake. You know what I'm saying? But that honest mistake then might perpetuate from the next person that went down there when they were supposed to be on watch, but didn't check that, but didn't see that it was a leak because the person misaligned, you know, the system, you know, then that's, in my opinion, then that's the person that you need to be holding accountable. Yeah. Not as much the person and that then, misaligned the system. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, when the investigation, man, <laughs> one thing about, about stuff, man, I found out of doing this job for a long time, man, is like, once something happens, look how many more things you finna go find once you start investigating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I bring this up, got to talk about the Bonhar Rashad, right? One little thing happened, somebody did it, and all of a sudden they found all the rest of these little, little things yeah. that could have prevented that maybe, or whatever the case may be. Now, if they spill this fuel, whatever, now they're going to go to the source and not even look around. They probably going to find several more things of probably rusted pipes and yeah. whatever happens. Uh, who knows, man? You know what I mean? So regardless of the situation, man, so, you know, we just got to get, get it right. We just got to get the water back going good. We got to get all this and then the investigation going to work itself out. And I, and I can see people being held accountable um, for this, this incident, man, at the end of the day, Somebody's always in charge, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So some 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 gonna happen. You know what I mean? So we'll we'll see what happens with that. We'll keep our ears to the to the deck and find out and see what we hear, man. And see what um and we'll bring it here, man. Time it happens, time it drops, time we figure it out. We'll most definitely bring it back to the pod and let the people know. Yeah, yeah. I could touch yeah, we could touch this. I don't wanna touch Russia, Ukraine, and I don't wanna touch that without somebody um that could speak to it better than we can. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we like yeah, to yeah. stay in the realm of like um people, things that affect uh uh yeah. people on a low on a personal lower scale level, not as much the operations. Um, because I know the operations affect people as well, but we like to stay on that realm now. If we could get somebody that could talk operations, I would love to be able to have that conversation with them, but I'm not gonna sit here and talk tactical tactics and operations and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm with you. Army Navy game. 
So first of all, let me start off. I did not oh watch the game. Gosh, so I know, man. I know, oh, man. I, hey man, I did supposed not watch to be like the game. A resident sports guy, man. I am the resident sports guy, but I, I did not this, watch man. the game because I, I have a little young son that was playing, had a uh-huh. basketball game also. So I would, I am not the going to be the expert in this game, but yeah. I did see the score of the game, uh-huh. and I was very, I was very happy with the score of the game because not only did the Navy win. Uh, this year, the Navy didn't have a very good team, mm-hmm. you know, when it comes to uh, wins and losses, right? So, uh, and Army had a better team yeah, they, yeah. when it comes to wins and losses. So, for the Navy to uh, get that victory, man, I'm I'm very, like, I'm, 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 I'm very proud. And I'm very, like, you know, Navy beat Army type deal, yeah. man. Like, I like like I said, I say that, man. Like, think about it, man. I'm, I'm a little... You know, this Navy and Army thing, like, never, like, growing up <laughs> meant anything to me. <laughs> <But> we, <laughs> never meant yeah. anything to me. Like, but now as you in the Navy, man, it's like, it seems like it means something, man. Like, Navy beat Army. Like, I'm I'm tuning in. I'm looking at, like, if I don't look at the game, I'm most definitely looking at highlights. I'm, I'm actually, like, paying attention. Yo, I know the dude you know that I mean? brought the GOAT to the game, yo. I know the dude. My man, Nick. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Nick. <laughs> hey. Oh, you. Hey, shout out to Nick. I know Nick. I know you listening, man. Yeah, we gonna have to get you ahead and talk about that. The the task. Yeah, man. Like task, most definitely. Man. Like the job of having to bring the goat to the game, man. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Yeah. I know if he made it this far into this episode, then I know he could hear me. Yo, come highlight. We need to talk about this goat, man. But um, it was a comeback yeah, win too. It wasn't a. We didn't come out the gate. So like you said, first yeah. off, we were what um, three and three and eight, and they was seven yeah. and. Three, so we were three and eight. They were seven and three, um, because now we four and eight, and they eight and four. But it was a comeback. W like um, first quarter, uh, ten seven. So they was up first quarter, and then they yeah. then they uh, looked like they got a field goal second quarter, and we didn't score at all. And then we scored, you know, and then we three more points in the fourth quarter, and then that was it. So we shut them yeah. out in the second half. We set, we shut them out in the second half, but. Hey, it's good to see, man. Um, I think doing a podcast, this might be the most that I've been kind of involved in even watching, like, the hype surrounding, you know, the, the game. I know somebody else, who I, I think, who was out there, too, um, Jackie Smith. I feel like she was out there, officer. officer. She don't listen to the podcast. So. But shout out to her. I know she'll listen yeah. to the podcast, though. But uh, shout out to her. Um, I think she was out there because she do a lot with the sports. Um, over there with the uh, midshipmen. So, Army yeah. Black Knights lost to the midshipmen. Did, did, did we won? We won last year too, though, right? I think so, man. I want to say yeah, we I did. I feel like we won last year. Let me check real quick. Um, I feel like we won last. But year. I, I tell you one thing, man. I like it. Like it though. Like throw throw it out there. Oh man. no, like, they I blew never, us out, bro. We, they blew us out. Fifteen yeah, yeah. zero. <laughs> Not surprised. <laughs> sorry, sorry. They this, blew us out. This, this is what I would say, man. To this to this game, though. Um, you could be a cowboy fan, you could be me, like be a 49er fan, you could be all these fans or uh-huh. all these teams, basketball, it don't matter. You can downright don't like each other when these games play each other, whatever. Yeah. But when the Navy play the army, yeah, we a team, man. Like we always <laughs> we, we get together, we like man, talking about it all the time. And, and it's like it's it's like one of those things, man, that, that brings us and the Navy like together a lot more, man. Like if we was on a ship right now. Trust me, these this game will be on the mess decks. Yeah. It'll be in the Between chief the mess. It'll be room, on the in the wardroom. Room, yeah. It'll be everywhere, man. Like, and believe it or not, like being in the, in the uh for the officer side of it, though, a lot of the, a lot of the the officers go to the academy and go to through the navy and stuff. So they they got way more energy than I probably yeah. got, you know, when it comes to the to the games, man. So you know, again, man, big shots out the Navy, man. Like being an underdog, man, and still come through man, with the victory. And, and did you see the uniforms? You know. Did you see the new like because they they unveiled new uniforms for the game? Uh-uh. Yeah. Let me look yeah, them up. Now I got look these uniforms. They're nice. Both up, both Army and Navy had new uniforms on for the game. The Navy's had like the little Captain America vibe to it, and the Army's mm. they had the um camo. It was like real nice. They got really they had really nice. This like I mean, it's like the Super Bowl for them. You know, those teams could oh, yeah. suck, but it's like the Super Bowl for them. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. So, they had some really decent uniforms on. Okay. Okay. Shit, man. Them uniforms, you can buy them. They ain't cheap either. Yeah. 
Hey, let, 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 let's keep it on um, sports for a second. Okay. Uh, I, I was a little, uh, I ain't really want to touch this, but we touched it before. So I'm going to touch it. I'm going to talk it again. Um, Simone Biles. Right. Okay. So when we talk, when I, the last time I talked Simone Biles, I was championing her for her decision to step down from the Olympics and do what she, you know, uh, and, and focus on her mental health because that is what is important. Important. Right. Yes. Um, and when you do that, when you choose to focus on your mental health, um, what comes along with that is the, um, willing dismissal of accolades and trophies and the things that you would get if you participated in the sporting event that, you know, you specialize in or whatever like that. Um, so Time Magazine, it's funny because you said this was probably going to get hot and blow up. And I said, nah, but I, as I looked at their kind of trend. So, but Time Magazine just awarded her uh, Athlete of the Year. And um, I'm going to cut to the chase. I don't agree with Time Magazine here. Um, nothing against Simone Biles at all. I don't agree with Time Magazine's pick. Um, I yeah. think that Simone Biles was courageous, honorable, brave, and super great for the decision she made to um, drop out of the Olympics and focus on her mental health. Or better yet, step down from her role in the Olympics to focus on her mental health. However, I think that that should get you... Um, a lot of things, uh, you know, uh, courageous act of the year, uh, woman of the year, uh, person of the year, uh, anything of the year outside of athlete of the year. Um, because I feel like that's being weighed against other athletes who might have had a year in tenure um, of whatever sport it is that they are um involved in and i'm trying to choose my words like very 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 yeah. very wisely um so the precursor is love simone biles was super inspired by her decision wish i could have been as strong as her in some of those decisions simone biles is the goat at what she does she's great um time magazine however i don't know what message they are sending and making her and, and labeling her as the athlete of the year because I think it takes away from the message that she sent by stepping down from the Olympics to focus on her mental health. Yeah. So this is my take, man. First off, I will say uh, the first question that comes to mind is like, how is this award giving? Who makes this call? Who does blah, blah, blah. So I dug a little bit of, man, it says the war is voted on annually by a panel of AP sports editors. Yeah. Right. So that's my first thing I want to know, like what, 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 what comes into play when it comes to, you know, selecting who's the, 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 the uh, athlete of the year. So um, to me, and this is my opinion is that an athlete of the year should be chosen by what they do in that field. Mm -hmm. Like her, her field is, is being a gym, gym uh, gymnastics, right? So whatever she do, she kick ass in there. Now, if somebody came on here and told me that she, she won this because of what she did before the Olympics, cause she did have trials coming up to the Olympics of winning a lot of events that got her to the Olympics or whatever the case may be. But I think some of those events was before, wasn't even in that same cycle. I don't know. Yeah. But somebody really have to convince me that's the case because me, I'm looking at it like you gave this this young lady this award because of of how she handled herself, handled her mental health situation, right? Uh, which she did great. Mm -hmm. She did great. She did things for her. She 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 did something that a lot of young people, old people, or whatever probably couldn't do. So my, I applaud her for doing what she had to do, you know, for her mentals. But at the same time, this is the athlete of the year. Yeah. Meaning like some people out there didn't want Super Bowls and some people out there didn't want MVPs and won 
all type of events. I'm talking from hockey to whatever the event is, right? Um, even somebody who who competed in the same event she competed in, mm-hmm. you know, won um, the female gymnastic, won the whole Olympic gold for they call it the solo whatever yeah. for um, for the gymnastics, right? In the same field she's in. Um, so I, I just don't know, man. But I really want to know. You know what I'm saying? I really want to know. And I and I'm I'm gonna dig a little bit deeper too, man. Like and and like when this stuff happens like this, normally is an article gonna come out, she's gonna get her big write up it. and she's gonna be in it. some magazine. So you have so in that ma- they didn't talk more about that, like like how did or did they say it's because of mental? I don't know what they what, what it they was say? about is because of her hard decision. Uh, because- that was the article for me read like it was about I, i'm not gonna sit here and say i read the whole article let me not even do that like, yeah, that'd be irresponsible. yeah but the parts of the article that i read through was all about the mental health um decision um her decision to focus on her mental health and that kind of thing and it wasn't really okay. of course they highlighted the fact that she's the greatest at what she does of, of is simone Biles. i mean like come on yeah um, she is no doubt but, um the article seemed to be more about her decision so maybe, maybe that's what we missing the point at. Maybe we missing the criteria <laughs> for after the yeah, year. But I, I, maybe it's more to it than just winning. Yeah, but I looked up you Associated know I mean? I Press know. Athletes of the Year years prior as well. I looked them up too. Yeah. Um, and I didn't read them. Um, I ain't really read the description of when they got it, but it's like Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, yeah, Wayne Gretzky, Steph Curry. It's like these players as they were actively like breaking records or having an MVP year or doing something like that. It wasn't more of them for being like a hero for making a decision that didn't have to do with the sport. Like, and, 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 and yeah. most of these um, articles that I, you know, I saw are most of the athletes that won. These were athletes that like, let's see if I can pull it up real quick, but these were like athletes that like really did their thing. Like, um, Let's go. Yeah. Um, hey, why, why, while he pulling that up, I wanna, I wanna be clear though. This has nothing to do with Simone Biles, <laughs> right? I wanna make this, make that very clear to everyone out there, man. This is more about um, the criteria and what we look for in the athlete of of the year. Um, and I would love to hear, man, everyone's opinion on this and what you guys think about um, the athlete of the year. Do you? And is she deserving of this? Yeah. Uh, award and she, uh, that's yeah. most definitely what i want to hear from everybody man is she deserving of this award and i know it's gonna be some uh, some great opinions out there and uh me and <laughs> me and dumbo would love to listen and love to talk about uh these decisions so put some put something in the comment box put some whatever man in the next ep in our next episode we'll most definitely get on here and talk about it yeah it says simone Biles, name time athlete of the year for raising a value on mental health i was just looking at associate press i can't find that for uh time i want to make sure it's time magazine every year so i don't want to um be irresponsible again i was looking at associated press and associated press simone biles is like athlete of the year like four times is simone biles again like of course she's athlete of the year for like four times for activity that she was doing as an athlete you know what i mean so yeah um of course you know what i'm saying but yeah that was a, a good way for you to end it with that question um yeah, that was a great way for you to end it with that question. Again, nothing. This has nothing really to do with Simone at all. Just more to do with um, Tom. Like, is that what? And if it is, then what is the what's the potential message in that decision? Uh, what's the potential message? I don't know. That's the reason why I'm asking. What's the potential uh, message in that? Yes, we do value mental yeah. health because we talk about it all the time on this on this podcast. We talk about mental health all the time. Speaking on mental health, um, well, yeah, speaking on mental health, um, the test, the exam, right? The exam results came up, right? Yeah. And uh, sometimes people could be shook from these, especially people that have been in a field for a super long time and they ain't make it yet, you know, um, grinding and trying their hardest and they just didn't make it yet. Uh, And these people... They got to have, you got to, you know, you, you know, you're kind of told to hey, talk to your people, have a conversation with them. 
And um, I was reading the message about that like recently. I was like, yo, talk to your people. And I was just thinking about like when I was a, if I was a junior seller and I had taken a test X amount of times, um, how I would have responded to my chief. All right. Matter of fact, let's just play it through. All right. Um, you, 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 the chief, you, the senior chief, right? You got a uh, highly motivated, you know, second class. Um, and they with you, they just kind of got to the command and, you know, they tell you that, you know, they've been cutting in the 90, you know, whatever percentile you got a locked up rate and they just not making it right. So they next year happened, results come out and they didn't make it. What's, what's your conversation? My, my conversation to them is like, um, uh, first off, they got something in place now too, though. So we'll do a CDB on them. Right. Mm-hmm. And that CDB is where we'll have a, a more deeper conversation about it. And my, my message is going to be is to stay motivated, stay energized, keep doing what you're doing. You're doing a great job. I'm going to say all those, you know, political yeah. words or whatever uh, that, I, that I need to say. But then at the end of the day, I'm also going to gonna tell them that we're going to dive into the numbers, too, because I want to my thing is explaining to people why things are how they are, uh-huh. you know. So I would like to have his their his but his or her profile sheets. Yeah. Uh, there and try to dive into the numbers a little bit and see why and how this is this shaked out like this because you're right we have seen those server situations where people showing in the 90 some percentile and just not making right. it is it because of time and rate is it because of this i want to show all that stuff and highlight it that's why every time what we always do man hey let me see your profile sheet right. i want to see a profile sheet before i even go in a cdb with you so i can explain to you uh, why things are the, how they are um but my biggest thing that I will, I will, I, the reason why we do the CEBs, the reason why we talk is to show sailors we support them. I think that is so huge, giving them a support system and they know that we care about them making rank and we care about their well being when it comes to them not making it and how they feeling and how they doing and things like that. Um, but sadly, um, taking that test is a um it is a individual thing you can't take it for them you know uh but you can impact it in other ways like like if you got a shit hot sailor what are you what are you doing as a leader to a shit hot sailor that's getting shit done you can help them by making sure they got evaluations or 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 in order because that's that's one of the the key things that you can help a sailor out right because how many points that your evaluation is giving them because I, I have seen a situation where you can have a sailor that's that's doing real great, doing really good things and end up they still falling behind sailors that's been there for a while or whatever the case may be. Right. Yeah. So you got to make sure you're supporting them. sailors. you know, who's who's doing what and how they doing it. And sometimes you got to make a tough decision to make sure those sailors are out there kicking ass, get get the, get a fair shake. But I think the biggest thing, man, is me showing them that I support them. Um and 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 want to help them any way I can. All right, so all that magic happened. All the magic you just said happened next year exam. Yeah. Six months later, whatever, right? Exam. Um, same result. What's your conversation? <laughs> it's gonna be more of the same conversation, man. All right. I mean, next year exam, same result. Yeah. What's your conversation? Yeah. I- <laughs> Now, how many times, how many times as a seller, I'm listening to you, but how many times as a seller would you, would you be able to listen to the same conversation? Well, uh, look, man, I, I got where you going with this conversation, but at the end of the day, man, like this, this. This on me too, though. You know what I mean, so I, I have to take a little bit of this ownership also of this. You know, as a leader, only thing we can do is just like talk to them, right? And and then as a leader, we can look at the other program that's out there that we can help them with. If that's the case, if if they're shit hot, if they're kicking ass, it's other programs that out there that I can help them with. I'm not gonna tell them that though, yeah. but I should be as a leader looking into a map program or something like that. If they kick an ass, if they score in 90 percentile and all that type of stuff. So it's, it's other things that I can look into as a leader, but the conversation about the test itself, 
man, like it's it's hard, man. What you could do is just go through the numbers again, <laughs> go through all this stuff, and, and and I got it, man. Like, but you can't you can't you can't physically give them anything when it comes to that test, though. Yeah, I can't come to you and say, oh, let me give you, you know, five points. You know what I mean? Because I can't I can't deliver that. Well, they cut you know in, I mean? in the so 90s. So. Uh, we, we said that they cut in the 90s. Some is just a yeah. locked up rate. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess the plan would yeah. be to try to get them mapped. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if it's fresh ways to have the conversation. Um, I don't know if it's any fresh ways. It's not after that first conversation. After that first conversation, <laughs> man. Like It's Five like, years, it's rough like after that, man. You know, I don't know if it's any yeah. fresh ways to like really remix it. Yeah. You know, do something different. But... But you know what though, man? It is some creative minds out there, man. Yeah. So um um uh, if you guys have you know what, I ain't gonna say what conversation you guys have had, but what are what is some of the feedback that you guys have gave sailors? And I would love to hear some crazy stories about what sailors have said back to Look, man, <laughs> the leadership. I don't... You know what I mean? Like, because I I um I never had crazy stories said back back to me but i have had a sailor tell me hey senior this is like my fourth time i got it yeah i, I like you know what i mean they kind of yeah, like yeah, cut yeah, me yeah, off yeah, yeah. from my little spiel <laughs> senior i got yeah, it you know senior i slow walk i got it senior that slow yeah, walk yeah, into the shop yeah. uh, you got your uh yeah. profile sheet man yeah uh, man yeah i noticed uh you uh you was like seven <laughs> points under and like, ain't nobody trying. Hey, I, I, I want to know what the sellers um have heard that, like yeah. what some of the junior guys have heard that. Oh you know, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Triggered yeah. them or what they might have heard that like motivated them or kept them going. What works, what doesn't work. I want to hear that from sellers. Is it a yeah, conversation man, that's too. needed to be had? Do y'all still want to get CDBs after, you know, not making it off the exam or do y'all want to, you know, kind of, Go ahead and do what you got to do and then, you know, get your CDB when you're supposed to get it. Because the CDB should be going over the sections and, you know, um, stuff like that. You know, so I want to know what y'all think. Like, are you, are you being affo- afforded enough training? Do you want to hear from a leader that didn't, like, really let you take any time out to train? Now, my, now on top of that, tr- you should be training on your own at home and stuff. But do you want to hear from a leader that really didn't value that? And then tell you how you could do better, but they didn't. Buy. So just that's some of the stuff mm. I want to hear. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you even want to show that that profile shit? Uh, when I'm when I ain't make it, when I was a <laughs> second and I ain't make it, and, and I I don't even know if I P and A. I ain't want nobody. My um EM two uh, brag man, he always listen. He always listen all the time. Um, he asked for the profile sheet, man, and I was ashamed, man. I'm like, man, I don't want him to see this. Mm. Like, I'm supposed to be the next up and coming guy. Like you're like, this ain't the way my test score is supposed to look. I think after that, <laughs> after that, he, um, after I showed it to him, I never wanted to feel like that again. When somebody asked me for a profile sheet, like I wanted to be able to like, you see, like people share their profile sheets on like Facebook and stuff like that. They normally the good ones. Yeah. Like you never see like the 47 yeah, percentile yeah. <laughs> on Facebook. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, no, I never, that one that says failed. So I never wanted to <laughs> be, see those, man. I never wanted to be, the person that was scared to uh, send submit like a profile sheet. So I studied, I studied yeah. my ass off, bro. And um, I cut like in the 97 percentile on that next exam and I made second, but it was because yeah. of that. Like I ain't never want Bragg to be asking me for my damn, Hey, shout out to JB, Justin Bragg. But I never wanted Bragg to be asking me for my um profile sheet and me be like, you know, ashamed of it. It's funny. Cause as a second class, he was like, he was kind of like a, L, he had like a LPO feel, you know what I mean? Like it's uh-huh. crazy back then, like second classes, like he had a, like, he was like the second LPO. Boss. Yeah. He was yeah. like the second. And I don't even know, um, as I think about it, I don't even know if he was a works in a suit. We had another works in a suit and then we had a junior works in a, we had another second class that was a works in a suit. And then we had a junior, like a third that was a works in a suit, but he was just kind of like. Like the A, I don't know if he was the ALPO in title, but he definitely was the ALPO in, in spirit and in force and yeah. in power. Yeah. Like he was, like yeah, the, you know, he was the guy. Um, so, some sometimes you just got those guys out there that's just good leaders, man. You know I mean some of them don't even want the power? They don't want to be named the ALPO. They don't want to be named the works in a suit. They just want to go out there and just lead people. Yeah, man. You know what I'm saying yeah. they don't. 
Yeah, you you got those guys. You need them. Like just like yeah, and you guy. Yeah. Like if he welcomed you to his house, be yeah. a good guy. Like yeah. he casa su casa. Yeah. If he, he yeah. like I'm telling you, like we yeah. still keep in contact like all the time. Like he still hit me up. I mean, yeah. he hit me up too. Keep me honest. Like he'll hit me up. Like if I I know I'm not ever gonna go too long without hearing from him. You know, and it's been years since we've seen each other you know what i'm saying so that's that brotherhood man that's like real love respect type stuff man so yeah uh, definitely man um so what's up with this dmap instruction man that, well, yeah that, man that. so so speaking of you know we was just talking about you know the test and all that stuff i think this is one of the things that may help out a little bit too you know um i'm certainly assuming you guys already know already read it hopefully is um the d map mm-hmm. right so uh detailing marketplace assignment policy that's what d map stands for yeah. um and in a nutshell I'm, I'm sure you're gonna get into the to the to the words of the of what it's talking about but now it's a lot of incentives out there. And i know i think last episode we was talking about incentives and uh, is that hurting us or is, is it helping us and all that? Now, in this case, I thought about it a little bit, man. Last time you asked me this question, I felt like I didn't have time to really think, you know, about incentives and all that stuff. Then I, th- I started thinking about the, c- the civilian sector, you know what I mean, on how the next person, what we do, we, we give them a, a 2 or $3 raise, right? Mm-hmm. And, and may give them some more responsibilities and all this type of stuff. I feel like in an in incentive program here, I feel like why not if someone is working to that to that um, capability because it's, it's different. It's different ways they doing it in this nav admin, right? They have one way they doing it is that if you stay longer at C, I guess that you know that you can you can you can pick up E five, right? Mm-hmm. It's one of when they got monetary um, giving you more money. Mm-hmm. For being more C time and giving you, you think we get paid enough? Um, oh no, I most definitely don't think we get paid enough. Why not? Because man, like from when you talking about, um, I feel like if if I was coming, if I was making the money I'm making, and I'm coming home every day, mm-hmm. I might I might think differently. But when I'm on that ship and I'm going out for six seven months, missing my family, missing all this stuff that's going on in the world. Ain't no way I'm getting paid. It. I'm getting paid the same. Or I'm stationed in Buku somewhere else and away from the United States for three years at a time. Yeah. Three years at a time. Ain't no way I'm getting paid enough, man. So I most definitely don't think I'm we real getting paid, especially when it comes to job specific things we doing. Like you send me overseas or you send me different places. But if I'm doing like a nine to five short duty, I'm coming home every day. Maybe. But there's some jobs out there, man, especially being on a ship or especially being stationed overseas that I most definitely have a problem with. Now, what, with, with, with the what pay. about when you add the health care and uh, VAH? You still don't think we're getting paid enough? Um, I don't think we're getting paid enough when it comes to um, our statue in, in, in the civilian sector. Probably if, if now if somebody now I don't have those numbers, uh-huh. <laughs> but I guarantee you if you put what we doing right now in an, in a, in, a, in the Navy. And you put up against a, a civilian and what they're doing, I guarantee you it's, it's probably a, a big, I ain't gonna say a big pay difference, but I bet you it's a pay difference. Okay. On what we're doing. Um, but I don't have the numbers with me, but if somebody wants to look that up, I'm not looking it up though. Okay. All right, well, <laughs> but, um, back. so back to the, back to the, to the, to the nav admin. Um, right now it's, it's in phases, right? Yeah. So the first phase is gonna be for um, the AB, the ABF is the ABF, ABH. GSMs and CS, which is they are um, for the race that's pretty much hardcore C duty intense yeah. um, rates. Uh, so they're gonna start with with, with those rates, um, and it's more. I think it's it, it, like, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. It seems to me that this nav admin is coming from a place of uh, C duty. Yeah. Right, like having uh and, and, and manning, yeah, you know what I mean? Having people uh stay navy and all and all this type of stuff, uh seem like where this is coming from. And at first I say, man, you know what, we getting all these incentives to do stuff, man. When are we gonna like have people that hey, you know what? Stay navy or don't stay navy, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But then I thought about it for a minute, man. Like, 
like why not get these guys some extensions to stay navy man like um i'm a i'm a i'm gonna read a couple things out here though man like um for, about that sentence they got one it's called the a2p uh-huh. right it's a E4 sailors who have served a minimum of three years on sea duty as apprentice, and that's E4 and below, and is eligible for advancement to E5. Yeah. E4s who have passed the most recent Navy wide advancement exam but have not advanced to E5 can apply for the E5 sea duty to um, the My Navy assignments. If selected, sailors will permanently advance to E5 upon reporting to E5 position, which will occur after approximately four years in their initial apprentice C duty assignment. Sailors must be obligated to sufficient service through int- intentions, um, extensions, or reenlistment to complete the full three year journeyman C, C tour um, and associated training pipeline. Uh, any sailors with a soft end active obligated. Uh, service date that already matches or exceeds the duration of three years gentlemen tour is not required to incur additional service now i read something earlier um saying that do they automatically fall into this program yep right and i I thought i read that earlier automatically fall into the program if you didn't want to do it you got to submit um submit a form right um Oh, where I read that at? I read that somewhere, man. I know I did. Oh, in order to opt out, the sailor's detailer must receive an electronic personal action request, a NAV purse 1306, uh, from the sailor via the command no later than 1 March. Mm-hmm. So it seemed like you automatically going to go into this one, program. 1 March 2023. Yeah, 1 March 2023. Um, That, that was kind of... That was the only like crazy thing I, I read about it, like... You better be on top of your game if you don't want to be on, in this program. Does, does, does that you does have it to... say one March twenty twenty three? I'm sorry. Does... No, it says March twenty one. What I'm reading. Okay. No, well March twenty one is in... over. I mean, I said not twenty one. March twenty two. Okay, because I know that not twenty three. I know it's... you can opt out of DMAT if your PRD is on or before one March twenty twenty three. So basically, what you're saying is they got to figure that out by March twenty twenty two. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's one of the they said that's the AT the A two P advanced position. Yeah, advanced position. Um and then you got uh what they call I don't know if they call it DMIP or whatever, the detailing marketplace incentive pay. Uh-huh. Now that one is sailors who execute the DMAP four plus three C duty option will earn a monthly incentive pay for the entire three year journeyman mm-hmm. C tour. Uh, rates will vary depending on location and type of C duty. Initial DMIP rates will range between $200 and $800 per month. Yeah. That means a sailor who is earning the average DMIP rate of $500 per month will receive $18,000 additional incentive pay over the three year journeyman C tour. <laughs> when I think of that, I'm going to think about, hey, well, I'm not, why well, I'm getting $500, not $800. But that's here and there. Um, mm-hmm. That is on top of the $21,300 in, in career C pay and C pay pr- premium. Uh, for the sailors assigned to ship's company for their three-year journeyman sea tour. In total, a sailor who executes the DMAP 4 plus 3 sea duty option could earn an extra $39,300 more in DMIP, CSP, and CPP. So why not, right? You got you, If you're keeping these sailors out to sea, so they're doing a total of seven years at this. And I don't know if it said at this command or they can go to another command. I'm not sure. If it specified that, but regardless, they're at sea. Uh, why not give them an incentive of being out there? Yeah, you know, what I mean, they can go to shore duty right now. They are eligible for shore duty, but they want to do another three years, um, or they committed to doing another three years, or the Navy is telling you you're doing another three years if you don't submit the right paperwork. Um, so why not get paid for it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the next one that we have is a command advanced to position similar to the a2p and, and ca the ca2p allows commanding officers to retain their top performing e4 sailors who are eligible for advancement to e5 um, by permanently advancing them to e5 to fill a vacant or projected to become vacant e5 position within their command before entering um, the mna sailors will advance to e5 upon filling the e5 position and must obligate to sufficient 
service through extension of the reenlistment to complete a minimum of seven years at the command. A three-year gentleman, E5, C2, or following a four-year apprentice. C, C, in addition to any associated training requires to transition from apprentice to journeyman. I'm not going to read all the rest of that, but I, what I will say is, man, that's a big deal right there, though, right? Um, and, I, I, and I'm saying it's a big deal um, because um, I look at it as, man, seven years, man, at the same command. Whew. That's a long time, man. That is a long time at the same command. Um, yeah, I mean, how does yes, that make... even work when, when, like, with evals? Yeah, like, what if how you is it going? How... As a junior seller, yeah. where you, where that kind of matters more to you? Yeah, and then on top of it, I know I'm, I'm hoping also we looking at at um these are being overman rates. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because uh, to me. We got ch- making chief at fucking East is seven years now. You know what I mean? We talking about giving me an E5? Yeah. You giving me, e- I mean, four years, man, now in today's Navy, depending on your rate, of course, man, four years, you're first class. Mm-hmm. Damn near. You know what I mean? You, if, you know, if you're not at four, a first class, you're damn near up forward. Yeah. You know, you you about to hit it. So that that's pretty, that's, that's the only issue I see with the whole thing, man. We talking about you're going to do seven years straight, but you probably, in some of these rates, man, you're already going to be a freaking E4. I guess that's why they specifying and saying exactly what race they are that they doing. Yeah. Maybe, maybe because they are over man ratings, hard to make, make a uh, rank. And I can see CS being one of those. Yeah. I don't know about well, the other Well, they see intensive. They see intensive too. Like, so they need them. I, we need them on ships. Yeah. We need CSs yeah. on ships. We need GSMs on ships. We need ABFs and ABHs. We need them underway like but I, I i yeah i mean i got that but i'm just talking about the fact of i wish i knew had in front of me um the time and rate for those rates though you know what i mean i mean we seeing gsm like, make chief seven years like we seeing it yeah. like it's not like it's yeah like we seeing gsms make chief seven years senior chief yeah less than 10 um so we seeing uh gsms make rank um CSs, I can't like with my eyes. I can't judge that uh, as as well as the ABFs and the ABHs. But from my judgment yeah. on GSMs, it's not like it's super locked up. Yeah, yeah. I know E's are even better than M's, but oh yeah, yeah. E's, yeah. Yeah. E's you, you just show up, yeah. man. You show up. Um. So okay, that's three of them we talked about. What else they got here? Last one. They have the last one. They have the continuous sea duty credit. Yeah. As all DMAP sailors earn CSDC while serving on sea duty, CSDC will be earned at the rate of one credit per month served on sea duty. Yeah. Sailors with the most CSDC gets priority consideration in the assignment selection process. Mm-hmm. Specifically, CSDC will be used in the assignment process to assign highly sought after positions, positions that allow sailors to remain in the same geographic location to the qualified sailors with the most CSDC, while CSDC does not guarantee an assignment in a geographical location, it gives sailors who complete back-to-back sea duty top priority for shore duty assignments of their choice over sailors who serve less time on continuous sea duty. The CSDC counter resets to zero upon assignment to shore duty. Yeah. Hmm. I think we could have did more on that last one. Why? Right. Why you say that? If you want some real like incentives, man, like that geographical location shit could be fucking anywhere. You know what I mean? That could be anywhere on probably the West Coast. I'm, you know I what I mean? mean? Like it's four different incentives. The first one is um, more money. Yeah. Well, the first one is uh, advanced to advanced to pay grade, right? So um, that ain't bad. The second one is more. No, money. no, no, no. The second one is more money. Yep. The third one is another is pretty much like a, a, a map by your command. Map. Yeah. And then yep. they got another one, a fourth one. Um, yeah. And you say we could do better with the fourth one, but and and my thought the process, other three. That's, yeah, my thought that's like you just holding the fourth one. That would be like just kind of looking at it as that's the only one, but that's the fourth of yeah, you know, four incentives. Yeah. And yeah. to me, that's not. And then you and then. And, and then the fourth one also, and I, I didn't look at it like that. The fourth one also is going to accumulate. 
So you take either one of them, then the fourth one is going to accumulate regardless, look like. Yeah, but now right? I got to fight you. Gonna, you gonna... Now I got to fight you yeah. and see who's going to leave earlier. <laughs> like, like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, now I got to. We, we, we got to see who's going to stay longer because I get a better chance at negotiating. And I, I mean, what's the what's the metric on that one, the fourth one? Like, how can they prove to me? If somebody say, nah, well, you're not. Like, how can how can we be proven that that's even happening? Like, how do we know that? Yeah. That's the only I'm thing about the fourth one to me, yeah. like how you know that's happening. Yeah. Somebody got somebody. I mean, somebody has to be tracking this. Who's tracking it? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But how can know. you show me? Like, if I'm up, if I did seven years and I'm thinking, like, I, I got, like, you know, first dibs on where I'm going to go, and then I'm you tell me, like, no, you don't. Like, what you got to, to substantiate you saying, like, you don't have, like, I can't, you know. You know what I'm saying? Like, hey, I want to go to Florida. Yeah. Um, I've been in Florida on sea duty, now I don't want to go to Florida on shore duty. Well, um, I know you think you could because of uh, going this to program, VA, buddy. but uh, you, you didn't build enough uh, continuous sea duty credit. It's 15, 16 yeah. people ahead of you with continuous sea duty credit, and yeah, they want yeah, go to go to Florida. Man. So. Yeah, you going yeah, to be able. So you going to go go ahead to Norfolk <laughs> or Japan. Like I don't know. Oh, man, that'd be crazy. Yeah, that, that's that's crazy. Um, well, you know what, man, I was looking at this system. What's, so which one you would you would try, man? If you was up, you was your time, which one you would go with, man? For 7 years at sea? Money. Yeah. You gotta give me some more. Like now now before we yeah. get into that, like um you cover like everything I would cover. Uh it's for flexibility with seashore flow to reduce gaps, right? Um, you yeah. talked about monetary, non-monetary incentives. Um, yeah, I'm either going to take the rank or the money. You know what I'm saying? And that's what it, that's seven years. That's a four-year tour with a three-year extension. You know what I mean? So that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money to be yeah. made um, there. Yeah, It would definitely have to be. A, and then it's like, yo, can I? And that's it's got to be at the same command too, right? It's not, yeah, you know, can I stay on sea duty, but can I cross decks? I don't yeah. know nothing about that. Like, can I shift? Can yeah. I swap with another? Seems seller? like the one that talked, seemed like the one that talked about the command advancement to a position. Said that had to be at the same command because he he making you the E5 yeah. to fill that gap. You know what I mean? So it seemed like that one. Hey, hey, um, while we talking, a hey, big shout out to um, uh, Ian One Chad Underwood, who just got his second E out letter in within a year. So I think that's pretty dope. Um, so two EL, yeah. EL letters within a year. Yeah, yeah. man. Big shots. EL out, letters man. within a year. So he got an EL letter on a Peralta. He left the Peralta and he got another EL letter on his new ship. So big, nice. big shout out to him, man. I didn't even know he left the Peralta. Where he at? Yeah, man. He left the I got to find a, the, um, I forgot. Uh, oh, he okay. on a Curtis Wilbur. Okay. Yeah, he on a Curtis Wilbur. So he did a swap. So he could get back to um, San Diego with his family. He did a swap. Yeah, he was one of the significant okay. people around when uh, I was going through. It's funny, full circle actually. He was one of the significant people around when we were going through the miscarriage because he was pregnant at the same time. And I remember he came up. I remember one day he was like, "Yeah, this is the kind of stuff." When I found out, you know, that the baby wasn't gonna make it, you know, just the way I mm-hmm. like the way I had to let him know that, and the way he received it, I'll never forget. You know, he was like. Like for yeah. it, I didn't even say it. I think I looked. He was saying something to me, and I looked at him, and he was like, "For real," and I was like, "Yeah, for real." And then he just got quiet. You know what I'm saying? So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, a lot of love and respect for that guy. Um, emotion, like emotional kind of. You know, somebody if you connect with him emotionally, y'all always kind of connected. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. But um, yeah. I, um, which one of these would you take? Man, I'm I'm around the same same way you going, man. Because at the end of the day, if I took the if I took the rank, the rank comes with the money because now you get you get more BAH, maybe you know what I mean, all that type of stuff. Um, also, but um, I, I would probably man like seem like some of these should run together though. I mean, uh, you know what hopefully mean? Hopefully they do, but uh, they might yeah. not. But some of these dudes, you know, while you talk about the fourth one, it's, it's a lot of people that are choose that fourth one. You know, it's yeah, a lot of stay, people yeah, that yeah, choose that stay, form. Yeah, to stay where they want to go because, you know what I mean, they feel like they probably can make rank too, though. Yeah, I never felt so, yeah. like that about being in, like, as far as it mattered where I went. Like, I never yeah, was either. too crazy about that. Like, all right, if I fall in knees, I fall in. I, I chose places and I want to go places, but if I fall in knees, I fall in knees and I'm good to go. 
Um, if you're a civilian, I'm talking yeah. about needs of the Navy. Like the Navy just gonna send you wherever they choose to send you or whatever. So, but yeah, I mean, but that's a there's some people I know now that would have rode with that. There's people I know now that took another sea duty tour right now just to stay just to stay local yeah. in whatever area because the family, your wife yeah. might have a career that y'all don't want to up up end her from, uproot her from, uproot the kids from school, certain things like that. So, yeah, I don't know. It'd be tough, man. That that'd be tough. Then you're right, people do it just because of that. Uh, but most definitely, man, there's some good incentives for, especially for some of those races, hard to advance to in, in a sea duty. U.S. sea duty, you know you're a sea going rate. Why not take the money? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Why not use the incentives to your advantage? Um, and I'm sure it's probably be some follow-ups. I'm sure there's going to be some people asking a lot more questions. So I'm assuming we're going we're gonna to be up here um, updating some stuff that's on here. Because it's the first time it came out. So trust and believe it's always some – some um some updated messages will be here to follow yeah. and we'll be right here to, to let everybody know you about know, it. I, like so it, I think people I think it's some people out here that'll probably take a a four month shore duty break instead of a three year shore duty tour. Um your your shore duty's different. Y'all pretty active. Y'all go on ships and stuff like that. But I can see a lot yeah. of sailors being like, if they had an option, you know, and I would love for people to kind of, you know, get back with me on this, but I can see a lot of sellers, if they had an option, yo, eight months on sea duty, four months on shore duty forever versus three years on shore duty. Um, and then four or three or five years on sea duty, um, just because of, um, or a year on a uh, shore duty, two years on sea duty, something like that. Cause sea duty, you got times when you're on port, you got times you're underway. Yeah. We getting crazy. You know, yes, yeah, a lot that's happening inspections and all of that, but I, yeah. I could tell you straight up, man. Um, I, and I don't know if it's, um, some syndrome or whatever, but, um, man, I miss sea duty. I miss like the, the, the pace. I miss the yeah. pace of sea duty. I miss that, man. Yeah. Most you definitely, know, um, most definitely. I, but I, I, the only thing I, I think about sea duty, man, sure, do you right? I can do a year of shore duty and, and be. I, I think the only issue that I have is, is that how we, on oh, how we, um, always talking about progression and things like that, right? So that's that's kind of like my only take on it when it comes to like shortening your 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 shore duty up. But say for example, sea duty, I, man, I think 36 months should be like max for everybody, regardless. Yeah. I think 36 months, I think you get there, you get your feet wet, that next year you progress, and then that, that third year is where that's your, you should be at the top of your game. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then it's time for somebody else to come in and do the same thing. Sure, duty, on the other hand, I just don't know how the, the evaluation side of it will work when it comes to progression because you're only going to be there for a year, like I say, like the, if you was there for only a year, man, but I don't even want to get in. But that's how we, that's how we, that's how we do things get, though. You know what I mean? You have to look at it. You have to think about it because, but, I don't get it. but yeah, I mean, civilians get evals too, but I don't want to get in a, like the weight of something or some now. Um, damn, I forgot what I was going to say, but, um, uh, shore duty versus sea duty. Oh, if you're not like bettering yourself on shore duty, it's almost like no reason to be on shore duty. Like, yeah. there's no, like, it's not, you're not going to make more money. You're not, unless you are, like, again, bettering yourself, unless you're somewhere out making money. Are uh, you in school? Are you doing something like that for the betterment of yourself? If you got children and you're spending time with the kids, if you, sure, it's like mm-hmm. personal, personal, personal time. You know what I mean? Like, you should be able to take care of yourself. Other than that, man, that sea duty life, it's just, as as crazy as we, it's like, as much as people might complain, gripe, you know, be down about it, you know, uh, wait at the uh, outside the pier because they don't want to go in the sit in their car. It's like, I think that I, I, I could be just speaking for me or, you know, but I think people miss it when they, when they not on it. Yeah, I know. I do. No doubt about that, yeah, man. I think people I'm miss definitely, it. You get bored. I'm most definitely bored, love it. Yeah. You get bored, Breeze, right? In the man, office and stuff. Yeah. Of course, um, and then I, and, and on top of that, man, I've been in we we we've been in long enough now too though. Like we on we when we own sea duty, we kind of try to enjoy it too. 
No, yeah, even yeah, though yeah. it's a lot going on, but when I'm on CD, I used to tell sales all the time, yep, you go to short duty, they shit gonna be going yeah. on, though. And my last you know short I mean? duty experience, I did all of college, the working out, the second, I worked at Wendy's, man, when I was uh, on short duty before. Mm. I had a job at Wendy's, man. Yeah, I man. quit in like five days. I quit in like five days, <laughs> man. Yep, I quit in like five days. That I, I don't know if I ever yeah. told that job that that story on here, but I, I used to work at Wendy's before I joined. So when I mm-hmm. came to when I moved, uh, I lived in Glen Burnie. When I moved there, I took a job at Wendy's, and um, I you know I'm like yeah, you know I was an assistant manager, I was a you know shift supervisor. I worked my way up to be assistant manager. I had my own store, all this, and they like yeah, um, you know we gonna hire you, you know. And I'm thinking I'm about to be assistant manager. I got all this experience with Wendy's, white, red, green, white, red, green on a sandwich. They hire me mm-hmm. and they like, yeah, you on the grill. I'm like, the grill. <laughs> I like how this happened. Like I told y'all, I was assistant manager. I was this group. On my, my first day at Wendy's, I'm on the grill and I'm using the old tactics. You know, four corners on a beef. And the dude, he come over. He's like, yo, I see you doing a, you know, the four corners. Then this dude, he's making his living in life off of, you know. The Wendy's yeah. job, older than me, stuff yeah. like that. Nothing against, nothing yeah. against it. But this is this like at, at the young age I'm at now with some arrogance or whatever, I'm thinking like, yo, who is this dude? You know, he's like, yo, I see you, you know, you you doing four corners on your beef, man. He's like, that ain't how you do it. I'm like, no, nah, that is. I used to work here. I was a shift supervisor. I was assistant manager. I saw all the training tapes. I used to play the training tapes. That's how you do it. You know, no mind you, I ain't say all that to him, but that's all that's in my head. I yeah. didn't say, no, nah, no, nah, you do four. He was like, nah, it's two corners. It's only two. You know what I'm saying? I was like, okay, all right. And the crazy thing is, because I told him I ain't need to watch the training videos because I like I had all the training. So mind you, so I hit the two corners. And the way Wendy's work is they don't want you to overcook um, no meat, really. And if you do, it goes into um, like a little container so it could be used as chili meat, right? So you're really making mm-hmm. most of your, your burgers like, as people order them so for instance i might have 12 um small patties on a grill at the same time and i might have eight big patties on a grill at the same time right because yeah i'm anticipating people to whatever now if somebody come in and get a triple it's a problem you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what i mean but outside of that like i'm you know i'm anticipating the the burger you know the way it's gonna work if you cover in yeah. a whole grill it's a rush period but so, however, I had my burgers out, he was like, yo, <laughs> he came back over again, man. <laughs> he was like, uh, yeah, I see you got, you know, 12 on one side and eight on the other. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's just, you know, preset. So, somebody order, I already got one ready. It's half of these, done half of these. He was like, yeah, you cut that down by like half at this at this hour, man. I'm like, no, nah, it's like normally. He was like, nah, yeah. Yeah, cut that down by half. <laughs> so I'm like, all right. So, I'm like, so I was like, I was like, all right, I don't know. So the next day they threw me on the fries. Pretty much the same experience. The next day the manager got punched in the face when he fired somebody. Mm. I think it was like the next day. And I live like right across the street from the Wendy's. So I went in there. And, and, and this was actually around this time of year. So I went in there like three days before my birthday. It might have been December the 4th. Um, that's Jay Z's birthday. If if people don't know that, but it might have been December the fourth. So I go in there and I'm like, "Yo, if I gotta work, it was I think it was the fifth. I don't remember my dad's birthday, but I'm like, if I gotta work on my birthday, I'm quitting. That 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 was my thing to quit. Now, mind you, I'm young. I was I had a Camaro SS at the time. It was man, I got kind of cocky because like this beautiful beautiful uh, woman came to work there one day. And she worked at like the Wendy's, a, a different Wendy's. I don't know why the hell she worked yeah. at Wendy's, but she worked at a different Wendy's, but she came to help us because after the dude that got fired, that punched the manager left, we needed people. So so she came to help. And I'm like, man, why am I here? I'm like, the whole day I'm working, I'm like looking over at her like, yo, like what am I here for? Like, I can't even like, so me being as arrogant and stupid and young as I was after I left, I came back and got some food and my like Camaro and all that. She was like, oh, that's your car. I was like, yeah, it's my car. But she was like, but you work at Wendy's. <laughs> I got another job. You know, now, mind you, we real young. Long story short, all that stuff happens. So I'm I'm near like the day after my birthday. Like, December, well, like a couple days before my birthday. I think it's like December 5th. And I'm like, yo, if I work on my birthday, I'm quitting. 
So I go up to the front and I'm like, yo, can I see the schedule? And you know how these jobs, they was like, well, what you, they was like, what's up? I was like, I just want to see if I work on my birthday. So they was like, all right, we're going to go back there and check. So the, they came back out and they was like, yo, you work on December 6th and December 7th. That was like the day before my birthday and my birthday. And then they was like, uh, yo, um, however, like we need you right now. Can you come in right now? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, all right. <laughs> I left and never went back, man. The worst thing about that, <laughs> the worst thing about that is I like Wendy's. I like the food. So I had yeah, to avoid, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to avoid getting my food from that Wendy's like for the time I was living there, man. <laughs> but yeah, that's what happened. Hey, yeah, I'll be right back, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna just go, you know, I, I ain't come back, man. I'm like, yeah, I can't work here. It's crazy, bro. man. But yeah, so that was and that was the mm-hmm. only job I ever had. You know, after that, I went to school. I got my degree. Um, but that was the only job yeah. that I ever had while I was in the Navy. Did you ever have a second job? While I was in the yeah. Navy? Or before no, the while Navy? you were in? No. For real? No, I never had a second job. Uh, I thought about it, but I never had one. Yeah, man. I, my, my, um, my chain of command and the command was progressive, bro. Like, they even had, like, this thing if you fill out a chit, like, to, like, work out. Mm-hmm. Like... So it'd be like respectfully request to not go to command PT because I'm on an individual workout plan because I'm training for uh whatever, right? Triathlon or whatever it is you train for a mud run, whatever you know, and they would approve it. You know what I'm saying? And I, I remember I had, that's when I lost, like I had to, cause they approved it. So I was like, yo, I have to make gains. You know what I mean? That's when I lost like 90 pounds. Cause it's like, I have to yeah. make gains cause they didn't approve this. And I don't want people like, well, y'all did this Thinking for him that, yeah. and, you know, all of that. So. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, outside of that, man, I, I, I don't really think we have anything else for this episode, man. No, man, we don't, man. We good, good mm-hmm. man. It was a good episode, man. I like going through 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 the little uh, nav admins, man. It makes my day talking about the nav So, admins. I finished a book. It's called 400 Souls by mm-hmm. Ibram X. Kendi and by Keisha B. Blair. Um, and just to get it right, I want to look up uh, something about it because I don't want to mess it up. It, this was probably the longest I've read a book for. Like, this is probably the longest I read a book. Like, it took me a while to get through this. Um, Uh-oh. It's um, 90 writers, right? Let me get, let me kind of get this right. Um, so the book, it says a chorus of extraordinary voices tells the epic story of the 400 year journey of African Americans from 1619 to the present edited by Ibram X. Kendi. He's on the CNO's reading list for a different book. Uh, well, this book actually how to be an anti-racist and Keisha N. Blaine author of set the world on fire. So I knew I was saying her name, her name wrong. Um, and the story kind of begins 1619 on a ship called the white lion that held slaves and it goes from 1619 through 2019 um and it just talks about and it's so every decade or so i'm 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 gonna probably really butcher my explanation of this but every decade or so they got a a poet who does a poem uh, at the beginning and then like it's like a six year block or a two year, three year block about like um a different uh a different struggle or a different person in that struggle for those four hundred years of um that fight for justice and uh just that African American history. The story that I connected with the most from here, um that I didn't know as much about because of course they talked about Malcolm X, right? Of course, they talked about Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and um, a lot of those people, Thurgood Marshall, stuff like that. But they talked mm-hmm. about Jack Johnson, the boxer. And um, and a lot of what I saw from Jack, a lot of what I always watch from Jack Johnson is uh, pictures or something, something like that that does kind of make Jack Johnson look like he's not even human. Like he was like just this big dude that was, you know, Donald Jack Johnson was a human. So they talked about uh, Jack Johnson and he, you know, what he represented at the time. And um, actually like the way that, the way that he was eventually stopped was like some laws were changed. You know what I'm saying? To stop him. Um, Like, because he was boxing and he was, he was winning fights. 
you know, but to yeah. stop him, they had to change a few laws. And he actually went to jail. Jack Johnson went to jail. I don't want to get too deep mm. into like what, but because he was dating outside the yeah. race. And um, at that point, at that time, it wasn't good. You know, uh, uh, um, mm-hmm. uh, uh, um, uh, two, two people of different races dating back then uh, wasn't good. He was marrying, you know, uh, women that was outside of his race and stuff like that. And he just had to be stopped. He was like the definition of like power in an age and time where it wasn't that that wasn't the way they wanted you know to be looking at people of his you know skin color yeah so that was a it was a good book um like i said it took me a while to get through it it's i've read in my opinion better books because again this book is as good as whoever it is one of the 90 writers or one of the 90 speakers at the moment you know so no matter how good the story is you got different people with different writing styles and so you never ever really get used to the pace of the story if you know yeah. an audio book. And I do audio books. So if you're reading it, it's probably different. But since I do audio books, I got 90 different voices in my ear. You know what I mean? And it's a long, it was a long audio book. So my next one, my next book is Will. Um, that's the next book I'm going to read. And I'm going to definitely you know, give the review on that book when I finish. Most definitely, man. Um, the movie we have was, um, we did... 12 strong Uh right so 12 strong uh was it's kind of like a movie about like right after 9 11 um sent uh some soldiers over you know with afghanistan over there we're talking about taliban we're talking about all all these people it's like they was like went it seemed like they just went through like a village though Right, seemed like they was in like in a stronghold in a in a village. The most of the most of the movie, um, mm-hmm. on horseback, all that stuff, man. And you know they had um, uh, Chris Hemsworth, right? And and at the time, I think when was this movie it was two thousand eighteen, I think yeah, twenty eighteen. Um, so at that time, he was also like, you know, his his career was was jumping during that time too. Um, with with when he. Yeah, his, his his career was like like jumping. So, um, good role for him. It was it was a pretty good movie, man. Like if, for um, what it's worth and what they was doing and 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 all that type of stuff and, and and how it affected. Just letting people know that it wasn't all you know a certain way. This is a different way you look at that things that was going on um, over there. Yeah, uh-huh. you didn't say like the, the way they sent these 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 um uh, soldiers in was different. Um, and when you look through it, I mean, they made a difference, man. So, um, good movie. Um, but I don't know from a movie buff guy, um, how a movie buff guy looks at this, at this type of movie, you know, from be, from being mostly in the same location type deal, um, or what was going on with the, and then, um, uh, the storyline was pretty good to me though, because I can follow it. I think we being in the military, we can follow things a little bit more too, um, on what's going on. But uh, what do you think, man? Um, first, I think is is some great movies that's been made in one location. You know, like I re- I yeah. really like Fences. Yeah. I liked uh, Castaway. It's it's some really Birdman. Um, that that, that movie Birdman, that one shot movie. So it's a lot of good movies made in like one location. Um. The uh, Quentin Tarantino, the last cowboy uh, one he did, I forgot, the, uh, I forgot the name of that right now. The last, what's the last uh, Quentin Tarantino movie he made? Um, I don't want to do this wrong, so I gotta pull it up. With, <laughs> with, with Samuel Jackson and it's certain. Oh, the hate, the oh. hateful eight, the hateful eight. I like the hateful eight. Um, but um, uh-huh. so let me kind of talk about this movie um real quick. You ever watch a a movie that's based off a true story and you don't feel connected until the end of the movie when the words come up and they talk about the actual true story? Um, And that's how this movie was for me. That don't take much away from the movie um, to me because I thought the movie was okay. I didn't think it was great, right? I think like three out of five. Yeah, I didn't think it was great, but it was some points on there that was like motivating and stuff on there and I'll get into more about it. But it wasn't until they showed the real people and the words popped up at the end of the story that I was like, man, this is yeah. important stuff that happened. But before that, I'm like, okay, you know, this is another, another Afghanistan movie, right? <laughs> war 
movie that like wants to be an epic, you know, kind of war movie. Now, Chris Chris uh, Hemsworth, I'm a big fan of him as an action star. Like as an action actor, I'm a big fan of him. He got like the look for it. He he make believable movies. Like one of my issues with Vin Diesel is like. I, I like his movies and I like Vin Diesel and stuff like that. But one of my issues is like, he almost don't ever get scratched in his movies. You know, are he like, he's like, yeah. he could do everything. You know, if he make a movie and he die, they bring him back and he become like this superhero that automatically <laughs> knows how to do every single thing that would take years to learn and develop. Yeah. There's no, and he's not that physical. He, 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 he don't look that yeah. physically fit. Right. No more. In real life, he <laughs> like, look like, you know, they covering up <laughs> stomach, you know? So, um, that's my issue with a lot of his stuff. My issue with The Rock um, kind of goes on the same. I really like The Rock. Like, as a person, I support yeah. him. I buy his energy drinks. I buy Terra Mana. Like, I like The Rock. I, everything he does. I'm, I follow him on Instagram, stuff like that. Um, his movies sometimes, though, is, like, in my opinion, like, it's not, it's no suspense in him because he not going to get hurt. Like, we've seen this man mm-hmm. hold a building in one arm and a helicopter <laughs> in another arm. So, 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 so he not going to get hurt. But what I like about Chris Hemsworth and his, like, it, like his last few outings in action is we've seen him get hurt. You know, we've been in suspense about that. We've seen, like, different, like, character arcs in his characters. That's pretty good. And I don't care if it's, like, the same role. You know what I mean? Like, I like what he brings to the table is believable. I didn't see him do it a million times and it worked out for him. Like if it's like a bus on the way to hit the rock, you know, he's going to turn to the side or something like that. And the bus going to break yeah. up, you know, Tom Don't Cruise, if it's whatever. a car yeah. flipping, you know, he going to either outrun it or he going to duck and the car going to flip over him. Like <laughs> we know all that barely touches. Great. Yeah. yeah. No, no, you know, we <laughs> yeah. know all that. Um, but another thing that I like about this uh, movie in terms of actors is you have Michael. Well, like the movie had Michael Shannon in it. Michael Shannon is one of my favorite character actors. I I like that he was in this movie, and I think this was probably the worst uh, movie I've seen him in. Like like for his role, like Michael Shannon is a beast, man. Like well, like one of the best character actors that we have, you know. Um, yeah. And I can't believe like he just was in like what thirteen Perfect Strangers or twelve Perfect Strangers, whatever that was. He destroyed that movie. The Boardwalk Empire killed that show. Like he's one of our better character actors and for this role he was like a military guy like and i think yeah i don't know if he like i don't know if this was like mail it in kind of performance for him but uh i like he was in it i ain't really like michael pena the same way like michael pena like all since crash that was like the first time i've seen uh michael michael pena in a movie and um he always had like some charm like to him and then seeing him transition to comedy and like everything like that was even as has been great but this one i think he was under underutilized i think you give chris hemsworth a movie right and not he's not much of a dramatic actor right he's an action guy he's Mm -hmm. not much of a dramatic guy and you put him in the movie with two people that could bring out drama and emotion and then you under and then you underutilize those guys Right, which is weird. You underutilize Michael Shannon and underutilize Michael Pena. This is me talking as a and Michael Shannon. I think he was a chief warrant officer too, right? Yeah, in the movie. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, he was a yeah. yeah, and he was the guy that was able to get uh, the captain the job or whatever like that. Yeah, but what I will say is I did like the general. This dude's name is like Navid Negabon or whatever. The general, the dude he had to. So pretty much, you get the um, you get the army right. They got to work with uh. And these are the horse soldiers. These guys made history, man. Special Forces team. They got to work with uh, Afghanistan, pretty much war, kind of like a warlord or alliance or whatever, um, to start uh, making airstrikes on the Taliban, right? Mm -hmm. And they, you know, these guys, all they had was horses. So it's like five months after September 11th or five weeks. I think it's five weeks after September 11th, actually. But um, they all they go out to Afghanistan. They got a kind of rendezvous with this um, um, Af with an Afghan like warlord or whatever like that, and like, um, well, he's a general, and kind of like become friends so they could do airstrikes because these people know the lay of the land, and he, and it's the first team to go in there, and stuff like yeah. that. Um, it was like I said, it was some good stuff. I, these military movies where they show the family in the very beginning and show the family in the very end, like they just always like like it's they try to give you like something emotionally to connect to, but it don't ever really seem like it works. Or like when they out in the lawn and then the dad has mysteriously 
came home. Got the and he's in the yeah. house. Like it's like I don't know if you remember the scene. It's the very end. Like the lady's out with the child. It's almost I guess the holiday. And the dad's just in the house through the window. She looks up and it's like dad's home. Like me and my wife, man, we got and I know this is a while ago, but it's like Man, almost every time I came home, I need somebody to come get me, man. Like, <laughs> like, like, yo, come pick me up. Or it's like, yo, it's an Uber outside. Or uh, it's something man, going on. They ain't trying to, and they ain't never try to sneak up on yeah. nobody. Either. That, yeah, that, girl, that you can can't come even get happen me. now. With like, because I got yeah. a smart home. Like, if mm-hmm. I pull in the garage, like, you know, she gonna see it. Like, so that can't even. Yeah. But I, it, it always tripped me out, man. And I don't want to not shout out uh, Trayvante Rhodes. Uh, he played uh, Ben Milo. Um, and he he was a uh, um he was getting followed. He was the one that was getting followed by the little young the little young kid and and um yeah. last one last uh, actor on my show because this is all about the actors. Uh, William uh, Fitchner. I don't know if you remember this movie. I remember William Fitchner. But one thing I know about him, right? And if you're watching this or uh, if you listen to this, just Google William Fitchner. You're gonna know exactly who he is, right? And he's always had like nice hair. He always had nice hair, but in this movie, he had like, I, I don't know if he had like a bald uh, cap on or something, but it was horrendous, man. It was the worst looking thing that like <laughs> almost honestly. So I watched this movie in a hospital. If I wasn't in a hospital, I wouldn't have got through this joint, man. Just off his head. Like, 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 just, <laughs> just off the way this dude head looked, man. Like you could probably, you could probably hold up, man. For the listeners, I'm probably gonna have a picture of William Fishner, his normal look, and the way he looked in Twelve <laughs> Strong, man. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta do that. <laughs> the way he looked in Twelve Strong. Did you have you put? Did you see? Uh, you saw a picture of how he looked in Twelve Strong. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually gonna look at yeah, it right man, now. You probably man. have to Google it, man. The way he looked in Twelve Strong is 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 the worst thing. Uh, he looked like Murphy, man, from um from RoboCop, man. It's probably the worst look I've I've seen. Oh shit! Yeah, it's probably the worst look I've yeah, seen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, he looked like Jigsaw, man. Tobin Bell, the dude from Saw, man. <laughs> yeah, he just looked real bad, man. I I got it pulled up. I just like William Fitchner, Twelve Strong, and then you just go images. Yeah, you got to put that on there, man. This boy looks sick. Got to put that on us. He looked real sick on this. I don't know why they did this. I don't know why they think like in the in the military like guys gotta have this look. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But um, I mean that's it though. I, like I said, I get a movie a three out of five. I think the true story is crazy, crazy like yeah. un- like like unbelievable for people to be this brave. And, um, I think the the scene that hit me was when a dude told him like, "Yo, you don't have uh, you don't have the uh the eyes, you know, the eyes of a killer. You don't have the eyes of a killer. You know what I mean? Oh, I can't go without saying Rob Riggle. So Rob Riggle was in this movie too. He played a colonel mm-hmm. in this movie. Rob Riggle did 23 years in the military um, before he became yeah. b- became an actor. Um, so he did 23, well, while he was doing comedy and stuff like that. But he he, he retired yeah. as a lieutenant colonel. He was in the military from 1990 to 2013. He got a combat action uh, ribbon. Uh, he was active and then he was reserved. So he did 23 years. He retired as a lieutenant colonel. So uh, definitely shout out to Rob Riggle. And thank you for everything that you do still for the military. And thank you just yeah, for man. being an inspiration and letting people know, like, it is a second, you know, you can have a second career outside of this, you know? So he was a Marine officer. Most and I think that was legit that they out. even threw him in, uh, that they even threw him in there. And yeah. as I'm looking at things, I'm seeing it say, and I got to do my research, so please don't let me, you know, go down on this hill, but I'm seeing pictures of him as a horse, uh, soldier so i'm wondering if he was one of those special force uh horse soldiers or not but i don't see him in their group picture so maybe not so i had to you know i had to do a little bit more research on that one but man that's all i got yeah man yeah man another episode down man i just want you know everybody to know i didn't bring my 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 dogs are one of these shows, man. I'm gonna bring my little puppies up and let you guys get a good look at them, man. Little bad jokers, man. Um, but uh, also I want to, you know, let everybody know, man. Mississippi stand up, man. You know, let's let's go, man. We got a we got a bowl game, man. Old Miss got a bowl game. I want to throw that out there, man. We part of the 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 New Year's Day bowl game. You know, in the year ranked number eight. 
you know, just want to throw that out hey, there. So man. real quick, I'm a recan already. Rob Riggle was not a horse soldier. He was involved in <laughs> cleaning up debris from the World Trade Center. So he was not. Hey, man, I was talking about Mississippi, man. So you had to go back. And I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah, man, I just don't want to leave the episode with people saying that Rob Riggle was a horse soldier. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, What's going you, on man. with Mississippi? Yeah, man, nothing, man. I just tell them that you know, Ole Miss, you know, ranked number eight. Then we the going to we got a podcast. We got. Man. We got <laughs> I was just talking about Mississippi. Okay. This ain't no Mississippi. This is permission to speak freely. <laughs> Oh, by the way, Permission to Speak Freely merch is available. I'm wearing it right now. Permission to Speak Speak Freely merch is available. Get your hat, get your hoodie. Yeah, most definitely, man. Go out there and get that merch, man. I got to get me some, too. I'm, I'm slacking. Thanks for listening. I was talking to Ella by this morning. To the, 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 the most dangerous <laughs> <laughs> podcast. In the really hey, we love you guys. Thank you. Another week. Permission to Speak Freely. Peace out. Peace and love. Peace.